This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. We're now going to start um, looking through each element of working capital uh, in turn. This one's on inventory, how best to manage inventory. Uh, and there are two things we need to look at here. Uh, the first is something called the economic order quantity, uh, which if you uh, took paper F2, you'll already have seen, and in fact F9 has slightly less, uh, examined slightly less than uh, F2. Uh, the other one doesn't involve calculations, but you're expected to uh, be aware of it, something called just in time. Anyway, first of all, uh, the EOQ model, economic order quantity, Uh, and we're looking at how to order uh, inventory. Um, uh, so we're a, a store buying desks, selling desks. How to go about placing uh, orders. And although in real life there are lots of different systems we might use for placing, deciding how we're going to place orders from the supplier, rather importantly, with economic order quantity, uh, we do assume right from the beginning that we order in fixed batch quantities. And what I mean by that, and I've written on the first page, that if, for example, whatever it was uh, we were buying, um, we needed 12,000 units a year, Then there are lots of different ways you could go about uh, ordering. You could simply place one order of 12,000. If you want the 12,000 at the start of the year, you've then enough to keep you going throughout the year. Alternatively, uh, we might decide to order 6,000 every six months. So the 6,000 at the start of the year, that will last you six months. Uh, and then at the end of six months, order another 6,000 and so on. And I could go on forever. Another way would be to order 1,000 units every month. There are 12 months in a year. Uh, I remember, we need 12,000 a year, so... Um, Order a thousand, a month later, order another thousand, and so on. And I could, as I say, I could go on forever, you know, 500 every two weeks, or with all sorts of possibilities. But we only consider ordering in fixed quantities each time. Uh, and the problem is to decide, when we look at the costs involved, to decide which would be better. Would we be better to place one order a year for 12,000, or would we be better to order a thousand? Um, 12 times a year, every month, and so on. Uh, and to decide, we need to consider what costs are involved. And if you turn over, there are three costs involved. Uh, one is the actual purchase cost of these units. Uh, but normally, we're not really concerned. It, it's fairly irrelevant because over a year, with my example, if we uh, are buying 12,000 units, then sure, the total purchase price will be the same, whether it's one order of 12,000 or 12 orders of 1,000. That's not going to vary. What is going to vary is the reorder cost. Now look at those three options. Um, there will be costs involved every time we place an order. The obvious one is delivery. And if there's a fixed delivery charge, you know, every order, there's a delivery charge of $100. Then, of course, placing one order only costs us $100 a year. On the other hand, placing uh, 12 orders at 100 each time, that'd be $1,200 a year. So uh, the cost of ordering, which, as I say, is primarily going to be the delivery cost, the cost of ordering will be higher than the number of order. Sorry, the cost of ordering over a year 
will be higher the number of the more orders there are over here. And finally, though, the holding cost. Um, it, there is going to be a cost involved of holding inventory in our warehouse. Uh, things like um, the rent of the space in the warehouse, the um, heating, lighting of the warehouse, and so on. There are going to be costs of holding inventory, uh, and the most important cost of all, the cost of the money tied up in inventory. The, the money we've used to buy inventory, either we've had to borrow with paying interest, or using uh, tying up cash that could perhaps have been put on deposit and been earning interest. However, the more inventory, the more it's costing. Now here, quite importantly, just suppose I did have just one order a year of 12,000, back to my little example, one order of 12,000. You'd start the year with 12,000 units, and over the year, this is a graph against time, over the year as I was using those units, the inventory would fall down to zero. And so when the warehouse is full, it's costing a, a lot to hold the inventory. When the house is empty, it's not costing anything. We say over the year as a whole, it'll depend on the average inventory. The average inventory would be 6,000. And when we come to do our costings, if I told you it costs a dollar a year for each unit in inventory, then over the year, if on average we're 6,000 units, a dollar each is $6,000. On the other hand, if I ordered a 1,000 units every month, You'd start off with a thousand units in inventory. A month later, if you've used them, that would drop to zero. You get another thousand, an order for another thousand. That lasts a month, then you get another thousand and so on. If you're ordering a thousand units each time, the inventory is going between, in the warehouse, is going between a thousand units and zero. The average inventory, on average throughout the year, it would be 500. And so, yeah, the lower the order quantity, the lower the average inventory is going to be. And therefore, over a year, the lower the cost of holding it is. And just to put them together in a little illustrative graph, if we had a graph showing the total cost over a year, as against the order quantity, uh, then as the order quantity increases, the average inventory will increase, as I just showed you. And therefore, the total inventory cost will increase as well. At the same time, though, the higher the order quantity, the fewer orders we'll need. Again, think back to what I said at the beginning. Uh, if we order a thousand units, to get 12,000, we need to place 12 orders. If I order 12,000 units each time, we only need to place one order. So, the higher order quantity will mean fewer orders a year. And if there are fewer orders, the total cost over the year of ordering will be lower. So this cost will fall. ordering cost per year. Now, in fact, 
it is a curve, uh, but that's irrelevant for the exam, and I'm not going to waste time on it. You will be asked to draw this graph uh, if you've done uh, uh, maths, much maths at school, university, then you, you, you appreciate why it's a curve, but I don't care. All that matters is the cost of holding inventory, which way around are we, uh, will increase uh, with the order quantity. The cost of ordering over a year, the total of cost over the year, will fall. Uh, we want to know the minimum total cost. So if we added them together at each level, you'd end up with a graph something like this. And our job is to find what order quantity gives the minimum total cost. All right, well, that was just sort of uh, explaining where we're going. Um, to make, hopefully, complete sense of what I've just said, look at example one on the next page. Yanis has demand for 40,000 desks per annum per year. The purchase price of each desk is $25. There are ordering costs of $20 for each order placed. And in holding costs, inventory holding costs will be 10% of the inventory value. And we are asked to calculate the inventory costs per year for the following order quantities and plot them on a graph. Now in the exam you won't be plotting them on a graph, but you are expected to be able to do the costings. Um, and let's have a look. First of all, 500 units. If we're ordering 500 units each time, then the total cost of ordering over a year, the reorder cost, It'll be the number of orders Well, how many orders will we need? Um, there's a demand for 40,000 desks. We're ordering 500 each time. And so we'll need 80 orders a year. And it says the ordering cost is $20 for each order placed. So the cost per year, 80 units, uh, sorry, 80 orders at $20 each is 1,600. The total cost per annum. Uh, as far as the holding cost is concerned, Uh, we're ordering 500 units each time, and so the inventory levels will be going between 500 and zero. So the average inventory if it's going between 500 and zero, it's 500 uh, divided by 2, so 250 units. And he says the holding costs are 10% of inventory value. So it's as though on average throughout the year we've 250 units in inventory. The cost of holding each one is 10% per year of the inventory value, which for each unit is 25, the purchase price. And therefore, uh, the total cost over the year, 250 units, 250 a unit is, I can't read my own calculator, $625. And so the total inventory costs, <coughs> 600, Well, that's if we order 500 each time. What if we order 750 each time? Same idea, the reorder cost. How many orders will we need? It's 40,000 a year. 
divide by 750 53.33 Is that right? 40,000 divided by 750. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, some people get upset about 53.33. I'll come back to that in a moment. But arithmetically, 53.33, uh, each order costs $20 to place. So over a year, uh, 106.7, I'll keep the full costing to the nearest dollar. Uh, now some people say, oh, well, how can you have a third of an order? Well, you can't. But what is going to happen here is you see the first year you'd need to place 54 orders, but there'll be some units left at the end of the year. So next year, maybe you only need 53 orders, and so on. We always assume it's a long-term thing, and therefore, on average, it'll be 53 here, 0.33 orders per year. Uh, what about the holding cost? We're ordering 750 each time, so the average inventory will be 750 over 2, which is 375 units. And again, the cost of holding each unit for a year is 10% of the purchase price. And therefore, the total cost nine thirty eight. if I do it to the nearest dollar. And so uh, the full inventory costs over the year, 1067 plus 938. 2005. And see what's happening as I uh, tried to explain when I drew that little graph. The reorders so with a higher order quantity, we need fewer orders, so the order cost had fallen. However, with a higher order quantity, the average inventory has increased, so the holding cost has gone up. We want to find the cheapest overall total. Well, of these two, 750 is more cost effective. It's cheaper than ordering 500 each time. He wants two more. You're probably getting bored listening to me. It'd be a good idea, maybe, to have a go on your own. Uh, to pause the lecture, have a go yourself, and then switch the lecture back on and see you got it right. Anyway, I'll carry on. Uh, a thousand units each time. A reorder cost. The number of orders. 40,000 a year divided by a thousand. We need 40 orders. Each order is costing 20. So a total of 800 a year. The holding cost. The average inventory, 1,000 over 2, which is 500 units. Uh, and again, the order cost per, uh, the holding cost rather, per unit, 10% of 25. So the total holding cost, 12.50. And so the total cost over a year, 2050. Finally, for this question, what happens if we order 1250 units each time? Uh, the reorder cost 40,000 units, 1250 each time means how many orders? Thirty-two orders. Each order is twenty dollars. Six forty a year. So again, you can see what's happening. Each time we're trying a higher quantity, the uh, higher order quantity, the reorder cost is falling. But of course, the holding cost 
1250 each time, so the average inventory is 625. The cost per unit per year is $2.50. The total, 15.63, total 2.203. So of those four, there are the costs, and in fact the cheapest is which one? It's 2005. 750 units will be the cheaper option of those four. Uh, it says plot them on a graph. Uh, again, you won't be asked to draw a graph of this in the exam, and I'm not going to try and draw a perfect graph, but what did we try? Order quantities of 500, 750, 1,000, and 1,250. Well, um, if you look at the total cost over the year, I say I'm not going to try and draw it perfectly, but you can see what I, what's happened. It was 1,600, 1,067, 800, so 1,600, 1,067, 800, uh, and 640. I said before, it's not, uh, it's actually a curve, not that I care. If you, did, if you try and draw it exactly, you'll find it is. Uh, the holding cost, though, uh, 625, 938. 625, 938. I'm probably not drawing this very nice at all, but 1250 and 1563. Oh dear. Anyway, you've got the order cost falling, you've got the holding cost increasing. Um, I'm not going to waste time, but if you did plot the total, you'll find it goes like that. And the minimum appeared to be 750 for those we've considered. But of course, what about all the other possibilities? What about 800, 700, 725 or something? Um, you know, there could be another order quantity which is lower still. Uh, oh, and the cost is lower still. Well, you could carry on drawing a, a pretty graph and try and read it off the graph, but in the exam we're given a formula which is based on everything we've done, the assumptions we've made. There's a formula for calculating the economic order quantity. You're given it in the exam, you're not asked to prove it. Uh, if you've done much math, certainly if you've differentiated in the past, proving it is actually very easy, but you cannot be asked to prove it in the exam, and I'm not going to. You're given the formula, and it's there in section 5. The economic order quantity, the cheapest, the best order quantity, is the square root of 2 c naught d over ch. Uh, I've defined the symbols below. Um, C naught, well, we're going to do it for, the, for our example one. C naught is the order cost each time, which if you look at example one, is 20. D is the total demand over a year. Again, in example one, it's 40,000. And CH is the cost of holding one unit in inventory for one year. And the question says the holding costs 10% of inventory value, which is 10% of the cost for one unit, which is therefore $2.50. It's then a pure calculator exercise, and you must have obviously a decent calculator for the exam. It's the square root of 2 times uh, C0 20 
times 40,000 divided by CH, which is $2.50. And if you check me on your calculator, what does that come to? 2 times 20 times 40,000 divided by $2.50 uh, square root. It comes to 800 units. So there is the economic order quantity. Uh, that's part A. Part B finally says calculate what the total inventory costs will be for that order quantity. Well, we'd already done it four times in example one. Let's do it one last time. The reorder cost. It's 40,000 units a year. If we order 800 each time, there are 50 orders. Each order costs $20, a total over the year of 1,000. The holding cost. 800 each time, so the average inventory divide by two. The average is 400 units. The holding cost per unit is $2.50. The total holding cost is 1000 Uh The total of the two is 2000 And although this doesn't actually prove anything, um, certainly, if you look back to example one, 2000 is cheaper than all of them and in fact try any order quantity you want um, the cheapest is 2000 uh, if we order 800 units each time so there's the economic order quantity the only way he can make it uh, the examiner can make it slightly more interesting is here We'd ignored the, the total purchase price because in the whole of example one and in example two, over the year, we were still buying 40,000 desks. We were paying $25 per unit. So the total purchase price over the year would be the same, however many we ordered. It wasn't relevant to the decision. However, the one way you can make it more interesting is to uh, tell you that if you order big quantities, then you can have a discount on the purchase price. Well, keep this example in front of you, because I'm going to stop this lecture, but in the next lecture, uh, we'll use the same example, but with a bit more information about these discounts I just mentioned.